Hey guys, this is Bob from Clamshell Creations. Um, I'm a self-taught silversmith and um, there's a few tips and techniques I'd like to share just to hopefully make you know your life a little easier. If I'd have known them early on, um, it would have made my life a lot easier. Um, so let's get into it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, first is charcoal blocks. Now I like to solder on a charcoal block um, I like the soft ones because they seem to reflect the heat better back into the piece. So it heats up faster and uh, you get a better distribution of your solder um, in my own personal experience. Now I've, I've tried on a hard charcoal block and I don't know what the difference is other than the composition. I mean they're both charcoal but for some reason I find that the soft ones just reflect more heat um, so it's something to consider now they do fall apart and break down over time as you use them but they're fairly cheap and you can you know you can get more if you need to but um, I just find that uh, I like using these better now the the hard charcoal I do find um, when you melt scrap and hopefully you don't throw any of your scrap away um, but you can melt them down into these little silver balls. And I use those a lot in my work, um, just as decorative pieces. And what I find with the hard charcoal is that when you melt them down, that they don't really stick. Like I have a solderite board here and a soft charcoal block. And if you melt those balls down on either one of these, as they cool, they tend to stick to the piece. And when you try to pull them up, you know, you can actually bring some fibrous material with it or charcoal with it from these two. And I find that doesn't happen on the hard charcoal block. So it's just another tip. Um, you know, you get a nice flat bottom, which makes it easier for soldering. They're not rolling around. And uh, they just tend to work good for that. So that's what I usually mainly do with this piece is just I'll melt my scrap, things like that. And then I solder all my pieces on here. I use a small torch, this little Dremel. And it works perfect for what I do. I mean, I just do smaller pendants, some larger pendants, but um, I just find that with the heat reflection of this, you know, I get a better solder. So another thing to consider are shot plates. Um, I didn't find these for a while, uh, you know, and it, it makes so much difference in your work. They have little flowers, um, different stars, things like that. They make a variety of them. This one's nautical because I'm, you know, clamshell creation. So I do a lot of nautical stuff. Um, so, but these bigger ones are a little harder to do without a press. These you can do with your hammer and a, a pusher, what they call it, just a steel rod that you basically hammer the piece down. Um, and those little silver balls, you just take those, you put them in your shot plate as long as the size is about right. And, you know, that's a technique you'll, you'll find, but... You know, these make a big difference in your work because it gives it a lot of custom looking touches. So it's something else to think about. And they're not very expensive. Um, another thing is for me is solder. Now I like using this stuff. I like using this wire solder. A lot of people use the pallions um, and they're fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I learned with the wire and I find that um, when I'm making bezels and I want to solder them to a back plate, I can cut, um, I can cut those, this wire and put it right up against the, the bezel wall. So, and you can make them as long as you want. I just find that it works better for me. And then if you can also, as your peat heats up, you can just, you know, take the end of the wire and push it right into your bezel or your decorative, whatever you're soldering, and it'll melt down, you know, and you can, it's, it's just a technique, but I prefer the wire over the pallions. So it's just a, something else to consider. Now I'm going to take you over here to my desk and show you some of my pieces. Um, these two here, these are ocean picture stones. I've been doing a lot of these lately. They're popular. Um, it's a beautiful stone. And I work with Laramar a lot. So, um, but what I like to do is pattern wire. 
which this piece here, you can see it's got a nice thick edge and that pattern runs all the way around the piece. Same with this one. And those are those um, silver balls that I melted down. And I use those a lot in my decoration of the piece. Um, it just breaks it up and gives it a little relief. And, uh, you know, you just cut your pattern wire, which is basically a flat, like this guy here. It's just a flat. This one's got a rope design, but it's flat. And they are bendable. You can anneal it if you have to. Here's another one. And it's just, like I said, it's just a flat wire. But you can, you can bend them, you know, to do these subtle curves around your piece. Like this one is the braided one, again, with the silver balls. Um, but I just find, you know, it really makes the piece look high end. Now this one I did, I used a pattern wire which is instead of a bezel strip, you're, you're using, it's a gallery wire. And they make all different designs. I think this is inverted heart, but um, again, the silver balls. And uh, it just makes a nice piece. And another idea, or something that took me a little while to figure out was, if you notice on most of these pieces, I use a, a twisted jump ring uh, for my bail to connect. And when I first started, I was taking these little jump rings and I'd cut them in half and use those, you know, as a point to connect my bail. And you only get those two little points of contact, or you would take this piece and you would file it down flat and solder it right to your bezel strip. And even though if you get a good bond, they don't always, you know, they can break if they're hit just right or too much force is put on them. They can actually break. And then once your sewn is, is set, you know, you're kind of SOL. So they're hard to fix because a lot of stones can't take heat to resolder. So um, what I've found that works for me, like on this guy, is I use that same jump ring. But what I do is when I solder my bezel, I solder that ring right to the back plate. So you get a permanent bond and it will never come off of there. And I, the, the reason I like using twisted is you can see the rope design goes right up the side and then it carries right up in here to the bale. So, you know, that's, that's the advantage of using the twisted style. But that's what I do with now with all my jump rings is I solder those, you know, right to the piece. So it's all one piece. It's, it's part of the back plate, so it'll never come loose. And that's something, you know, you want quality. If you make quality jewelry, you want to make sure it's not going to break or fall apart on somebody, you know, because that's your reputation. So I just find it, it's, it makes it perfect. It'll never come loose. And you get a, a quality permanent bond. So just something to think about. And then another thing is oxidizing. Like all these pieces have been oxidized. And uh, all that does is it brings out the, the finer details um, in the piece. Like if you have this engraving on this piece, um, that oxidizer gets in those little nooks and crannies and like all around the the base of the bezel makes it a little darker antique style. Now what I use is this black Midas from Rio Grande and uh, you know, just a few seconds, I use a little brush, I paint it on the whole piece turns black. And then I do the same with the jump rings and the bales and uh, you know, you just polish them up. You, uh, I use, I think a 400 radial disc, the blue ones um, and just kind of take off the patina until it gets to the point where I like it and, uh, you know, just polish from there. But, um, it really accentuates the details in the piece and really brings them, makes them pop. So those are just some of the ideas I wanted to share. Um, I'm sure there's something I've missed, but, uh, these are the things I wish I knew early on because if I did, 
you know, if I'd have known, it would have made my life so much easier and the quality of my work would have been better early on. Now, I've, I think I'm in a pretty good place where I can make some quality stuff. And, um, you know, I've learned from YouTube and there's some good videos out there to learn the basics, but they don't always cover, you know, some of these other things that uh, you got to kind of learn on your own. So, um, and it's, it's a good idea to find somebody on YouTube that kind of you, you relate to. And I found a couple that, um, you know, were relatable and kind of fit the way I did things as well. And I think that was uh, like Durango Silver. He's pretty good. He's a down to earth guy. I, I enjoyed most of his videos and he did a lot of the things that I do. Um, so I learned a lot from him and the Spirit Mountain. Um, she's really good. Uh, does a lot of detail work and uh, kind of down to earth. So I learned a lot from both of those. And, you know, there's some people out there that are really technical. I'm, you know, I like doing nice things, but I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. I like when I design stuff, I kind of put it together as I'm going. Some people like to draw things out and uh, measure everything. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that if, you know, you work that way. But, I, you know, I'm not that technical. I, I kind of you know, fly by the seat of my pants. I go with what I think looks good and, you know, I can change things up in a heartbeat, you know? So I've just, you know, I, I just, that's just the way I am. I like to work that way. So hopefully these videos have, uh, helped you out. I'll probably come out with a couple more as far as silversmithing, um, and some other tips and more advanced things. Um, but, uh, hopefully it'll make your life a little easier and uh, you won't have to struggle through the early parts like I did. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, Clamshell Creations. Follow us. Thanks.